Hi, everyone. Welcome to this series of lessons that's going to cover Dementin Kleitman study that took place almost 70 years ago, but continues to be super important as we think about this very natural thing that happens to each of us every day, every night rather, sometimes in the day, which is sleep. And um, this particular study is super important even today simply because of what it gave us in terms of thinking about human beings sleep patterns sleep cycles particularly also thinking about our dreams uh, which is a very mysterious you know very uh magical sort of thing where there are so many different explanations um, for why we dream or what we dream about is so fascinating uh, but this study really does provide within the biological approach of course very scientific way of understanding how our sleep takes place or what happens inside us when we're sleeping in our brains specifically also in relation to how our eyes are seen to move around or stay still while we're asleep so first, as is usual, we'll begin with an introduction where I'll give you a very quick overview of the study itself and introduce you to the key terms that were used in this study. So to introduce it, um, as you're already aware, this study resides within the biological approach. And um, the assumption of the biological approach, if you recall, is that all of our behaviors, our cognitions, our it, our, our cognitions, meaning our thoughts and our emotions, are all biologically programmed responses, meaning that the answers to why we do certain things can all be found by understanding physiology or bodily processes. So that's one of the core assumptions of the biological approach where physiological explanations will provide answers to why we think, feel, or act in certain ways. Now, this particular study was specific to sleep. And within sleep, they were looking at, they meaning Dement and Kleitman, were looking at um, the relationship between eye movements, between rapid eye movements, and dreaming. So, um, when we are asleep, and if you've ever stared at somebody sleeping in a obviously non-creepy way, uh, you'd be able to tell that there are times when their eyes, you can see them darting around while they're asleep and they may be fast asleep. And at other times you will see that there's complete stillness in the um, eyes. And so that's where uh, that's what this means when we're talking about eye movements. And dreaming is, of course, a state of consciousness um, whereby our mind is filled with images Sometimes those images can be coherent and relate to a certain story. Other times you will probably wake up and only be able to remember certain very quick sort of photograph-like moments of your dream. Um, and then what Dement and Kleitman were trying to do is that previously a lot of the research on dreaming just asked people to tell them or to tell researchers what they remembered about what they had dreamt about. But in this one, Dement and Kleitman wanted to sort of provide a more objective, observable framework for this very mystical phenomena of dreaming. And dreaming is something that human beings have been fascinated by for thousands of years. Now, the way that they uh, made or tried to make dreaming a more objectively identifiable state is by using a laboratory experiment. Now, within this experiment, they were also testing for a particular correlation and they asked participants to narrate their dreams. And at some points in time, they also did somewhat of an interview of participants, as you learn about as we move through the study. Now, the correlation that they were looking at was basically while they were observing this um, sample of seven adult males and two adult females sleeping, they were trying to figure out whether there was a correlation, meaning a relationship between how long a dream was uh, reported by participants and how long the eye movements went on. Now, you're probably wondering, I've talked about eye movements quite often already, you're probably wondering how do you really see eye movements? So the scientific way to see eye movements is using something called, and this is a bit of a mouthful, but don't worry. It's something called an electro 
encelograph. Electroencelograph, or you might recognize this term, the EEG. So obviously in the 50s, they used whatever version of the EEG was available to them. And using this machine, which provides electrodes that are connected to the scalp and the eyes in the case of this experiment, they were able to literally see on paper, the machine would draw out waves that would indicate movement. And it did that for brain activity as well as eye movement. And so they wanted to see, is there a relationship between how long a participant reports dreaming and how long the eye movement was that they were objectively observing using an electroencelograph. So that was the correlation part. And this was a really, um, the experiment itself is not, uh, you know, uh, it's not a very difficult one to understand if you really can figure out what the key terms actually mean. So next, let's look at those key terms that we'll come across more and more as we proceed. Now, the first key term here is obviously I've been saying how what happens when you sleep. We talk about this thing called sleep cycles. And if you can look at this uh, diagram right here, these are the different stages of consciousness. And this diagram is basically showing you brain activity during different periods of consciousness. And so the first one, as you can see, when we're awake, you see very close together brain waves, fast movement, um, beta and alpha. And alpha is sort of like a, a more relaxed period. So when you're awake and more relaxed, you can see that the amplitude of the brain waves is a lot more. It's very, um, it's very high amplitude compared to waking beta. Now, when you talk about NREM, you might be wondering what that means. That's sleep where there is no rapid eye movement, non-REM or NREM. Look at the brain waves in NREM1, NREM2, NREM3. They're still much bigger, right? Indicating that there is an increase in the state of brain relaxation. And especially when you come to NREM3, it's completely very, very big waves. But in REM state, if you look at these waves right here and you compare these to waking beta, you see they're actually a little bit similar in the sense of the size of the waves and the speed of the waves. So um, that's just a small uh, demonstration of how during sleep cycles, there is brain activity. It's not that when you're asleep, your brain is not active at all. And we use these different um, terms, NREM1, NREM2, and NREM3, as well as REM, in today's world to talk about these sleep cycles. But when Dement and Kleitman were doing their study, they were the first people to actually identify that there is a period of sleep that can be called a rapid eye movement or REM period. And there's a period of sleep that can be called a non-REM period. So that's why it's so important today still to look at this study done so many years ago. The electroencelograph or EEG that I was talking about earlier is a device that hooks up electrodes to different parts of our face or scalp. And then it provides a visual track of brain activity or electrical activity in different parts of the brain. It literally measures electrical activity in our brain. You remember that our brain is full of electrical communications that take place between different neurons. Now, the next thing is just a, this is obviously just a reminder. Subjective data is all of that information which comes from personal experience and opinion and of course, our objective data is data that is quantifiable, numerical, observable information. Now, if you haven't already guessed, the EEG is very much a version, uh, something that gives us objective data, whereas the interviews or the participants who were recalling their dreams falls under subjective data. So these are some of the most important terms that you should keep in mind, particularly 
these two, REM and non-REM. Just remember, non-REM is when we are sleeping, but we do not have any eye movement. There's little to no eye movement. Whereas in REM or rapid eye movement sleep, there's a lot of movement behind our eyelids because we are dreaming. And that is basically what Dement and Kleitman found as a result of their experiment.